Well, welcome to the Water Mind Studio. Um, I'm thrilled today to have a celebrity of instrumentation, <laughs> a guru of instrumentation, but certainly a superstar in our industry, Pam Moss with Hawk. She is the application development manager at Hawk, all things data and software, and just a master of all their technologies. <laughs> You're too we, kind, Jim. We've been working with Pam forever, and she's really has been a great asset to MR Systems and the water and wastewater community in general, and really helping ourselves and our customers know more about the responsible application of their equipment and how to really get the, the, the most and the best out of the information and the data it's providing to provide that key information that the plant personnel needs to operate as efficiently as possible. Um, but, but with that, uh, it's great to have you here, Pam, and uh, really interested in learning more about your technology and the latest things Hawk is up to. Well, thank you, Jim. I'm so excited to be here today at MR Systems, the uh, Water Podcast Studio. This is an incredible setup you guys have and a great service to your clients and the water industry as a whole. So thank you very much. This is going to be very fun today. Excited. Yes, we wanted to take a little uh, look at a couple items in drinking water that a lot of Hawks clients, MR Systems clients are looking at both from a process side and a laboratory fill management side. One of the big things that a lot of you guys are looking at, particularly in a surface water treatment plant, as well as in wastewater, and we're talking about membranes, et cetera, is looking at turbidity. And a few years back, Hawk got approved a new method for turbidity, looking at turbidity in a very different way, looking at it in a more holistic way, 360 view of all the size of the particles to give you a, a truer reading of turbidity, and that is the TU5 series. And I just want to talk a few minutes about that and how folks are using turbidity. We certainly all know why it's important in a surface water treatment plant. All of you have your process turbidity coming in through SCADA systems with MR systems. You have laboratory turbidity you're looking at. So I just want to take a little bit of a look at that technology because it is a breakthrough technology and really a very cool technology, both on the laboratory side and on the, um, on the process side. So let's just take a look here real quick little bit of history because I am a history buff. Um, you know, Hawk has been around a really long time. Um, after World War II, uh, Clifford and Captain Hawk formed the Hawk Chemical Company. And after a couple of years, he walked into the plant in Ames, Iowa, the drinking water plant, and they were using something called a Jackson Candle unit that's over here on the left-hand side of the screen. And basically, it was a flame underneath a large glass vial that they would look down into and look at the clarity of the water. And Clifford came home one night to Kitty and said, why are we doing this? I mean, look at all this technology that got developed after World War II. Why are we looking through a flame and looking at clarity? So this slide gives you basically Hawk's whole turbidity development history through the years, starting maybe around, you know, 1957, jumping from that old Jackson Candle unit up to some of the first turbidimeters as they grew through the age, grew through the age, most of y'all know probably for the past 12 years, the 1720Es with filter track turbidity. This is the next stage of breakthrough technology in this TU series. The new method we're looking at is method number 10258. And the difference to this method is that in the old method, we all know that turbidity was a 90 degree scatter, a light scatter. And we were really only getting a portion of the particle, what we were looking at. Now with this series, we're looking at a conical view and capturing all aspects of the side of that particle all over. So you're really getting a more truer picture of your turbidity. So that is truly what the TU series is about with the method 10258 that is EPA approved. One thing that's really neat is that the optics are the exact same for the lab instrument and the process instrument. So now you're really comparing apples to apples when you're doing process control on your, uh, your raw subtle filtered finish turbidimeters coming through SCADA and the turbidity you're running in the lab. So that's the real breakthrough difference. And these heads, you can go through and you can exchange those heads. They're interchangeable. It's the same optics, which is cool. Less water um, volume needed, less cleaning needed, faster response. 
So this really is a great thing for the drinking water industry uh, to be able to get down. Uh, Pam, is there any way to connect the lab units to the SCADA system at all? That, I've never well, done that before. Yeah, the, well, those lab units um, have USBs. Okay. So you could pull USB data out. So there are folks who are using, um, in our world, water quality data management where they're bringing SCADA data in and comparing and trending uh, the lab versus the mm -hmm. process. But it's just CSV. Okay. I mean, if you, you could run a CSV file you anywhere can, you wanted to. And you connect to that with WIMS also? Yeah, we connect to that okay. with WIMS, right. So that might be the place to bring the two data. Uh, it's probably easier for the, all the operators to work in Hawk Wims, which is Water Information Management Solutions. We interface all the time with all the various SCADA interfaces that our MR systems uses. You know, Wonderware, VT SCADA, keep naming it, um, Ignition. Yeah, you all have a whole slew that you guys work with. But it makes the power of having your SCADA data, process data, with the operator's lab data, the certified lab data, all in one place, then you can really start trending and looking at that. Anyway, so that's pretty cool. a lot of manual entries, it's always good oh. for the lab person. And we all data kick numbers, don't we? Yes, <laughs> there's always a thing. Uh, the other quick thing, just for to look at um, something that folks are using, since we're in the drinking water world, mm -hmm. for the next couple of minutes on the drinking water side here, is the uh, portable parallel analyzer. This is not a SCADA instrument or a process instrument but it gives the operator an opportunity to use um, a chem key technology, which means all the reagents are in these small chem keys, and you can take this uh, portable parallel analyzer and you can run multiple tests in parallel. Um, so if you're a chloraminated water system, well, there's not a lot in Georgia, but there are in the Carolinas and Florida and other places. Um, the instruments that MR System uses on their SCADA system are online chlorine analyzers, free ammonia analyzers, uh, monochloramine analyzers, pH, etc. This gives an opportunity for an operator to run all those tests at one time so they can better correlate the process analyzers that are coming through SCADA and their lab and field analyzers here. So this has been a real breakthrough in technology. Instead of having to run all these tests that would take you know, 30 minutes plus with a colorimeter, you can run these tests much quicker, have quicker results, and you take the human factor out of a little bit more because you're just dipping it in water and letting it sit. You're not having to worry about you know, opening up powder pillows, timing tests, et cetera. That's so, really yeah. interesting because the, once we get into the full automated world with all these online analyzers, the biggest crime you can ever make is controlling off bad data. Oh, totally so, agree. Yes. So this is a great yeah. tool to at least verify that your smart online analyzers are working as they're supposed to, because if we start controlling off bad data, we create some very bad things. You and do. And the operators start chasing their tails. So really at MR Systems, what we're about mm -hmm. is data they can trust and peace of mind for the operators. And this totally agree. seems like a perfect tool to help us accomplish those two things. It is. It's always about, you know, trust but verify. Mm -hmm. That's why we do QIQC. That's why you're verifying. Even if you have online tests for it, you're verifying it with handhelds. You can take that and trend that data, see if you've got issues. If an issue comes up, I'm in the Hawk Wims world, you can issue trigger reports that, and many systems do this, some of the largest systems you guys work with, that if you get, for instance, on a total chlorine value, if you get a 0.2 milligram per liter difference between the online versus a handheld, send a trigger out so everyone can investigate. Is something up with the process analyzer? Is there something up with Sally or Joe's technique mm -hmm. on the lab side? Um, is there something up with SCADA? Did the 4 to 20, did the scaling get off for some reason? So it's a great way to really respond, to keep your plants optimized, keep you in compliance. Because our job, us working in partnership with you, the clients, is making sure you're delivering safe water because our job is to protect some public health from the water environment. And these tools help y'all do that. All right, well, I appreciate it, Pam. And we're gonna be doing a couple other little mini series here on some of their other technology. But again, I appreciate you joining Thank us you. today. Thank you, appreciate it. And hopefully you'll stay tuned and, and see a few more of our uh, podcasts on some of the other great innovative hop technology. Thank you. Thank you.